Hello guys, welcome back to the Watch Attic channel. Today I have a very nice comparison for you guys. On the left is the Seiko SKX009. On the right we do have the Seiko Turtle SRP777. Now the watch on the left, the SKX009, uh, sells for about $200, while the watch on the right, the Seiko Turtle, what you like to call it in the watch community, sells for about $250, up to about $260, $270, matter, matters where you get it from. I got this one for $245. Now, they are both diving watches, but which one is better? Which one gives you more bang per buck? Now, let's get into it, guys. Now, the only way to do this is to rate them 1 through 10 based on 10 different factors. As you see, we're going to be looking at the movement, the build, finish, water resistance, iconic status, the loom, the accuracy, the bezel action, affordability, and certifications. And let's jump right into this one, guys. Now, our first thing we're going to be looking at is the movements inside of these watches. They're both automatic timepieces. Now, the watch on the left, the SKX009. This watch features the Seiko Caliber 7S26 automatic self-winding movement, which houses 21 joules, has a 41-hour power reserve, beats at 21,600 VPHs, or vibrations per hour, or 6 beats per second. It's non-hackable, and you can't manually wind the watch. Accuracy stated at about plus or minus 15 seconds a day. Now getting to the watch on the right, the movement inside the Seiko Turtle is the Seiko Caliber 4R36 automatic self-winding movement, has 24 joules, beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, or 6 beats per second, stating plus or minus 15 seconds per day, but honestly, that's what I got is much better than that. A power reserve of 41 hours. As you see, there are some big differences in between these movements right here. The 4R36 in the Seiko Turtle is obviously the winner in this one because first of all, it has hacking. Um, it also has a few more jewels in there. And the accuracy I found to me to be much better in my, uh, you know, in my own eyes from testing the watches out. Uh, my Seiko Turtle runs about five seconds fast a day. Now I might have a lucky turtle, <laughs> but um, it's running really great. Now the S SKX, on the other hand, I can expect about 15 to 20 seconds plus a day. And also we do not have the hacking feature. Now don't get me wrong, it's a great movement, it's very reliable. The power reserve definitely works very good as long as you wear it. Uh, the power reserve on the Turtle definitely works a little bit better, I will say, because you can actually wind the watch yourself to give it power. And with the Seiko Turtle, you know, you constantly have to shuffle it. And honestly, when you hand wind a watch, it's definitely a better way to, you know, wind the watch. So in terms of movement, I'm going to have to give the SKX on the left a 7. Now the Turtle on the right, it's a great movement. It's a $245 watch. It's very accurate hand winding, hackable, I'm going to have to give it a 10. 7 versus 10. Let's move on to the next one. Now let's talk about the actual build of these pieces. Now the build quality on both of these watches is really good uh, for its price point. Now it's very close. Um, you know, the case, the bezel, everything is really fitted very nicely. Now these are not the stock bracelets. These are both Super Jubilee bracelets from Strap Code. Um, that's why I did leave the bracelet section out. This actually came on a rubber strap. This came on the stock SKX Jubilee bracelet, which some people love, some people hate. Not a big fan of it myself. A little bit too wobbly for me. But the build on both of these watches is, you know, kind of the same. Um, the bezel fitted to the case is very nice, uh, as is the SKX. Um, the bezel, you know, is basically identical. It's, it's, it's the same bezel. Um, the case backs... You know, they're done very nicely. They're screwed down. Um, there's no really error there in any way. Um, everything fits nicely to the lugs, even the aftermarket bracelets. Um, you know, the crowns work very well. Um, the SKX and the Turtle, both of the crowns operate flawlessly. Um, you know, it's very hard. They both honestly have to get a 10. Uh, it's pretty equal in build. So let's go ahead and give both of those a 10 for the build. Next up, we're going to talk about finishing. Now, each of these watches on the case features a brushed surface on the top of the lugs. 
And then we have a polished surface on the sides of the uh, watch here, very high polish. Now the finishing is very good on the Seiko SKX, I must admit. Um, there is no errors. This is a used watch. I've worn this watch many times, so there might be some scratches on here. Just, just kind of try to ignore that. Uh, finishing on the crown is very nice as well with that high polish. Um, very nice, no sharp edges, nothing like that. Um, definitely very good. Now let's take a look at the turtle. Now I did notice the finishing on the turtle is slightly, you know, a little better than the SKX. Um, not huge, not, not not like huge like uh, improvement, but you know it's it's definitely a little finer the uh, high polish, you know it's a little smoother, not super noticeable, but definitely noticeable if you really look closely, and um, yeah, I mean it's still great on both of the watches, but I'm definitely gonna have to give the SKX, I would say an eight, and definitely the Turtle a ten. Um, you know, the brushing is really nice on the turtle on these rounded corners over here. The polishing is really nice as well. So definitely an 8 and a 10. Let's get to the next one. Now let's talk about water resistance. Let me just tell you, I've tested both of these watches out in the ocean, pool, in a lake, uh, hot showers, um, pretty much everything uh, except scuba, di scuba diving. Because, you know, most of us people that wear diving watches, we don't really go scuba diving. Um, some people do, I, you know, but personally I have never been scuba diving, uh, not a big fan of diving, but I do like diving watches. Now, each of these watches have the same water resistance rating, 200 meters or 660 feet. And they both have screw down crowns, so, you know, it's pretty equal. Um, I've never had a problem of any water or, you know, fogging of the crystal, anything like that on the Hardlex crystal. Um, you know, it's basically a 10 and a 10 because they're exactly the same and they work great. Next up, we're going to talk about iconic status. This is kind of a controversial one. Um, the SKX is kind of branded after Seiko's first divers. The Turtle, this is a modern iteration of the Turtle. The Turtle went through a few different changes over the years. It has been seen in some movies as well. Um, the SKX has been seen in a couple movies also. Um, but I think in today's world... For some reason, the SKX is, you know, much more iconic than the Seiko Turtle. Um, the Seiko Turtle would probably come in second place in terms of that. That's just in my eyes. Um, the Turtle is extremely popular. Um, you know, it's it's more of a wearable design. Not everybody likes the, you know, the older cushion case. And, uh, you know, this is more of a rounded case, a bit more wearable for uh, the, the general population. Um, I'm going to have to give the SKX, which is seen in All is Lost with Robert Redford. And um, I'm going to have to give the SKX a 10 and the Seiko Turtle an 8. Getting to the loom. Now, both of these watches have the same loom. It's Lumabrite. Now, loom is amazing. You guys know this. Seiko has some of the best loom around, especially at their price point. They definitely dominate that uh, category. Now, I'm definitely going to have to give both a 10 out of 10. Extremely bright, lasts a long, long time, and everything lights up extremely bright. Even the pips last a long time. Both a 10 and a 10. It's the same loom, and it's great. Now, next up is accuracy. Well, this is, you know, this is obviously we're going to see the SRP777 or the Turtle come ahead in this one. It has a hackable and hand-winding movement. Um, you know, you can just precisely set the time. And you can't do that on the SKX, unfortunately. As you see, you can set the time perfectly to a very uh, specific time. Now, on the uh, Seiko SKX, as you see, we do not have the hacking feature. I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew the crown, pull it out. It just keeps running. Um, it makes it very hard to set the time uh, to the exact time of the day. You're always going to be off by a few seconds, no matter which way you do it. I know you can kind of back hack it, but, you know, um, I don't really like doing that. I, th I think that's kind of stupid. But <laughs> but anyway, obviously the uh, SRP777 or the Turtle is going to win in this category. Um, I'm going to have to give this a 10 and the SKX a 7. Next up is bezel action. Well, essentially, these are the same exact bezels, and they pretty much operate exactly the same. Um, it's very good. It's very smooth. There's really not much play in either of them. As you can see, there's really not much play. Everything is very smooth. 
Uh, the SKX is very smooth as well. Feels exactly the same as the uh, Seiko Turtle. These are both going to get a 10 and a 10. I think for this price point, the bezel action is quite good in my eyes. And they're basically the same exact bezels. Uh, one's black and one's in the Pepsi variation. So definitely a 10 and a 10. Now we're going to talk about affordability. Well, obviously the SKX is accessible, you know, at a price point of 200 or even pre-owned at a price point from anywhere from 140 to 160, 150, 130. You know, it matters the condition of the watch and etc. Um, definitely more accessible, definitely more affordable affordable, but you are getting a little bit less for your money. And the SRP777, I found this one at $245. Pre-owned, you can probably grab them for about $190 or something like that. Now the SKX is definitely more affordable um, than the Seiko Turtle. And it's definitely more accessible too. I see that, you know, I'm talking about this exact, this exact model, the SRP777, the black model that comes on the rubber strap. Um, I'm definitely going to have to give the SKX a 10 and the SRP a 9 on this one. Now, almost getting to the end, guys. Uh, glad you stayed with me through this, through this whole video. It's quite a long video. Now, last one is certifications. Um, the Seiko SKX is a certified ISO Diver 6425 certification with a screw-down crown. Now, if you didn't know, these watches go through many tests to get this certification. It, it can take a whole nother video to explain it. But the Seiko SKX is ISO 6425 rated. Now getting to the SRP777. The SRP777 also is rated by ISO and it's rated 6425 as well. So you have the same rating for, uh, it's suitable for scuba diving and it's in compliance with ISO 6425, both of these watches. Both get a 10, a big whopping 10 for both of them. I mean, a certified diving watch at $200 and 250 bucks, can you really beat it? Now guys, we're gonna count all these, all these numbers up and see who's the winner. All right guys, here it is. Well, the obvious winner, or not so obvious I should say, is the SRP777 coming in at 97 out of 100 while the SKX came in at 92 out of 100. Now a big part of this is due to the movement in the uh, Seiko SKX compared to the 4R36, the hand winding hackable movement, which has a bit more, you know, it's a bit more complex than your 7S26. It also um, has a couple more jewels inside of it. And yeah, but very close race, very close race, 92 to 97, very close. Uh, you know, both of these watches are very good. You guys know this already. I've reviewed both of these watches um, separately. And I think this was just something cool to do. You know, a lot of people are probably on the fence. Should I spend the extra money and get the Turtle? Or should I, you know, spend a little less and get the Seiko SKX? I think either way you go, you're in good hands here. And um, yeah, but, you know, the SRP won in this, in, this, uh, in this little video right here. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video of the duel of the Seiko SKX and the Seiko Turtle. You can definitely find some links in the description which are useful if you want to purchase any of these watches or some of my top five affordable alternatives to the Rolex Submariner which I've kind of made like a staple on this channel with one of my videos. Um, definitely hit that subscribe button. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think the Turtle should have won or the SKX? Which one do you think is better bang per buck, better value per money? You know, I want to know what you guys think. This is what I think. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. This is The Watch Addict, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.